and he gives he gives sauce uh, to uh, movie stars that you'd know the name. Yep. Yes, sir. How big is this company? Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's eighty-four million now, and it's going to be about one hundred and sixty or seventy million. Revenue. Yep. You mentioned something about the specificity of him having the penthouse setting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He before he did another um, webinar for us, different view, and uh, the and I told him. Uh, you gotta, you know, you gotta live large. And he was not tight with his money because he had a, a new, uh, whatever the expensive Porsche is, and this, that, and other thing. He got a second uh, beach house and this and that. Um, and he's single. Um, the, his, he's got a grown daughter who goes, I believe, to Columbia University. Who, uh, when she graduates this, whenever it may be a year, she's coming here. And um, the, um, but everything. But Tom said that he faltered on something. Deb said he faltered on a little something. He said, everybody, no, nobody does 100%, but these guys are doing 75 to 90%. Uh, and, uh, but habits, he had, he had some pretty good habits to begin with. Um, but um, he never, like he said, he never thought conceptually that he ought to live in the penthouse, the top one. I think he lived in the same building, but 15 stories down or something. Oh, so he, he just bought the one? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he bought the, he, yeah. And he never thought of that, you know. And just as some of you, uh, you know, in, instead of a bunch of cars, you should say you should own, you want to own Ferrari. Instead of the, I mean, so, um, even though your goals and goals and affirmations were significantly larger than you might, might have thought of them, but they were still virtually all. A couple of wanted to rule the world and shit like that are chump change. You don't get to build the, the largest healthcare organization on the planet, like Rick did, if you say that you want to control uh, um, healthcare in the state of Texas. You know, you don't get 300 hospitals and 400,000 employees or thereabouts. You know, saying that you want to control healthcare in the South. And you will not exceed your wildest expectations. Now, when I set my goal when I started the, the company that the, most of the system is based on, I said I wanted to have $2 billion company. I said I wanted to be in the top five uh, energy executive uh, pay uh, compensation uh, on the planet, energy. And I wanted to have the 50th largest energy company in, on the, on, in the world. I fell 1.5 billion short on the revenue. I was in the top five all five years of uh, compensation, and I was the top one two years, which means I'm, I'm making five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million a year, okay? Uh, and uh, get this, I picked, I wanted to be the 50th largest. When the, the, the day they threw me out, the month that the, the listings of energy companies worldwide came out, we were number 50. Now, how do you think that happened? In 1982, I said I wanted to be the 50th. And who was I patterning myself after? Zapata Oil. Who owns Zapata Oil? Does any, do any, no, no, none of you know. Bushes? Correct. The Bushes and Baker, his Secretary of State. And the, the, way, the month they threw me out, when they had the worldwide listings, I'm going down. Motherfucker! <laughs> That's me! Of course, I'm out now. Then it gets on the list and you can sh uh, shake off. Fuck yes! And 10,000 companies went out of business. I should have said number one. I should have knocked out Exxon Mobil. What the fuck? I'm telling you, the shit works. The shit works. Now, he, he's a salsa-given motherfucking, fucking good-looking chick motherfucker living in the pen. I mean, now, the, some of the, some of the, you know, from the, the, the poverty-stricken areas I come from, and he come, he's living the dream. I don't know what, exactly what that means, but I hear it all the time. But he is living the dream. 
but he was already considered successful by his contemporaries. It's like the refugee lawyer from uh, Uganda who's now a refugee, uh, a refugee who's now a refugee lawyer in Canada. As far as all the little refugees are, he's, he's hit the top. And when in real life, he hasn't done dick. And just like when I was Hispanic businessman of the fucking millennium, and I said, I hope the fuck I'm not the richest Mexican in the United States, otherwise we're in big fucking trouble. And I was right. You will never exceed your wildest expectations. And I can tell by the look on your faces, I mean, you guys, well, you, you still lack self-esteem. You still lack self-worth. You still lack self-confidence, I mean. But with this, everybody said the same thing. The shit works. You're looking at the shit works in the back of the room. The shit works. And uh, he's 30, is he 30? I think he's 37, 38, I don't know, something like that. Late 30s. Late 30s. And I, I, I forget the car. He, he got rid of his, whatever his expensive uh, Porsche is. And now he may even have that fucking uh, car that I don't know what it's like. The uh, Mercedes. No, no, the Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, back. yeah but I mean, the, 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 those cars are chump change. Thank you very much. <laughs> You know, we could rob a liquor store together and get that much money. No fucking, I mean, no problem. You know, you know, you know. I won't even wear a mask. I go in there and club them, you know. <laughs> Whenever I see these guys on, on, on the CNN where a guy tries to rob a liquor store and this old 71-year-old man takes his glasses off and jumps the, the guy, all the other young kids are running for the, the doors. Some old vet comes in like this, he puts his glasses, there's a thing on CNN, he puts his glasses down, he looks around, yeah, and he jumps on the kid. When, when all you studs are running for the doors. What, 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 do you, what, what are the takeaways from him? Dream big. Pardon? Dream big. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's got a worse story than yours. From, you know, where you come from, your father, your mother, and all this bullshit. Not, it's not, I don't mean it's bullshit, but it's because it's real. It's real. But those two Irish guys, I mean, the Irish guys ask the same fucking questions. It's the potato, potato famine all over again. <laughs> I mean, they can't shake it. It would even be worse if he had been English. If he had been, but he's not. He's from some little uh, Caribbean fucking island or someplace, you know, where everybody's a crook. Of course, I know you're the exception to that rule. Exception. What else about him? Cold calls. Yeah, cold calls. He still makes cold calls. He has a funnel. He has salesmen, and he still makes cold calls. We had two real high-priced sales guys here a few years ago, and uh, during um, the last afternoon, uh, the they were saying we've never heard so many ways by these twenty guys in here. Does it really come down to cold calling? These are two high-powered sales guys. We have never heard so many different ways to ask, do you have to make cold calls? The answer is yes. On one of the webinars that Josh was kind enough to do for us, uh, I don't know, a year ago or whenever it was, and he says, I still knock out 20 or 30 cold calls during your life. I forget when you said it. And he had already done a couple of deals, and these guys in here, you mean we still got to do cold calls even after we make acquisitions? <laughs> but even uh, top sales guys, they know they have to make cold calls. Uh, you know, it takes a certain kind of personality to enjoy cold, cold calling. The uh, what else about him? Yes, sir. He listens to you every morning to keep other people. I wish that my kids had had that things listening to me every morning um, to keep out of default. Yeah. I mean, the, um, when you're inundated, when you're immersed in it, the people that do the best, and when you get on the Zoom call and you, you'll hear them say that, um, you know, we listen to Dan, and believe me, it doesn't do my ego, I don't give a shit, but it works. It's extremely effective. It's, I mean, it transcends just being effective. Anything else? He emphasizes yes, the upside. What? He emphasizes the upside. Yeah. He looks at the end goal. He looks at the end goal. 
now uh, he's, you know, I forget, um, after these three deals, they're coming on the back of the LBO, he has uh, uh, ascertained because of he's in the industry, there's a four or five hundred million dollar revenue company that's a motivated seller. Now you knew what he was talking about, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what those, those acronyms are. I've got to 73 years old without knowing. I mean, it's no big, you know, I don't, not important to me. Anything else? Yes, Josh. One of the things he talked about was positioning with the lending institutions. I, I think his circumstance is different because he's been there and everyone knows he's critical to the operation. But Correct. It's, you have to position it to where they understand, that you understand, you can get, go somewhere else to get the money. Correct. If you go to them and they can tell that in your head it's, oh, please give me some money. Correct. It's fucked. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the money from these, these uh, financial sources, it's a commodity. And people are desperate to get it out the door. And the, um, he interviewed, I think, five or six different investment banking concerns um, to represent for the sale. And he's got a, con he's a conflict because he's a CEO, so there's two sets of professionals. And then there's a third set of professionals uh, for him. And, uh, you know, because he's got to make a decision as a chief executive officer of an existing entity that's right for the shareholders. He wants to make uh, the right decision for himself because he's the principal beneficiary. And the uh, other board members, in the end quote, independent board members, have to make, the, uh, make sure they make a decision that the, uh, the smaller shareholders uh, can't come back and sue you about can't can come back and sue you about him. And he's done it all right. He's got first class representation. And the, um, but when, when he told me in uh, one on one in my office that uh, they, they'd be sunk without him, and you know, a bell went off in my head because he's the, he's the guy that turned it around, he's the guy that's grown double the size of the company, and um, the, um, and the shares that he got weren't given to him, he bought them. He bought a disgruntled shareholder out, some other disgruntled shareholder that, I think he said the Israelis, that had got tired of waiting. Anything else about Miguel? He was heavily focused on growth and put himself in. Yeah, no, he, he's a top line guy, and he knows with top line, and, and when you, when you uh, initially were introduced to the QLA stuff, you know, top line uh, uh, is the best. You can always find somebody, a bean counter, to uh, reduce expenses, to make it um, go down, dribble down, or uh, reflect uh, bottom line. And I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that, you know. The guys that create top line are golden. And I used to be one of those. I used to be, and the, the, another, way, another kind of top line is because you're going to be running around finding money, as did I as did I, and when nobody else could find the money. Um, Josh is finding the money for his deals. They're not dropping off the, you know, uh, apples, uh, overripe apples on the, front, on the ground for him. And when you're used to finding money, you get used to finding money. And when you get used to doing deals, guess what? You get used to doing deals. And when you get rich, you get used to being rich. It's a lovely self-fulfilling prophecy. And then you don't, you know, you don't get lazy. You know, I, I, I only work 50, 60 hours a week now. And Sally says it's really more. But I don't consider it work. Some of you, the first work week, you're going to have less than 40 hours. I can, I can pick probably five of you. And you're fudging a few hours, so it's probably 30 hours. There's going to be, uh, there won't be maybe one or two that exceed 75 or 80 hours. Even though you've heard all this all week. And that's why I say most of the people just pretend. And they engage in self-sabotaging activities. Okay, anything else about? Okay, YouTube, thank you very much. Talk to you later.